I'm here at Ruler Live, which is a bike show that claims to be the finest bike exhibition in the world. You can have a drink with the stars of the sport and also take in some of the finest tech and memorabilia there is. And that's why I'm here. I'm on the hunt for all the coolest new bikes and tech. So let's get to it. Wahoo has got some very intriguing stuff on its stand and I'm very excited to see these things because they've not been released to the public. This is their first public outing. This is the Kicker Roller. I know that because it's said on the side of it. And it appears to be some kind of smart roller that also holds your front wheel in place in case you're not confident at riding just normal rollers. And there's some kind of flywheel built into the back there. But other than that, it's hard to exactly tell what it does specifically. And well, I've spoken to the Wahoo people on the stand and they're being rather tight lipped about it. They're saying that it, hopefully it will be launched in 2022, but I guess we'll have to watch this space. The other exciting thing there though, is the bike that's on here, this beautiful SL7 uh, Tarmac actually has what is appearing to be the Wahoo Speedplay power pedals. Uh, and you can tell that they're different from the standard uh, speed play pedals because the spindle here has this extra sort of, well, wider spindle body here with closer to the crank that presumably has all the hardware in for the power meter, the strain gauges and stuff. There's also these curious little uh, magnet sort of socket points on it, which I'm guessing are for how you recharge it. Um, and it looks a similar kind of system to how you recharge DI2 uh, with that kind of cable. So yeah, it'd be interesting to see. But again, they're being quite tight-lipped about it. But as you turn the cranks, you can see these blue LEDs flash and there's one on each side. So, you, well, you'd say it's a dual-sided power meter. I don't know if there's going to be a single-sided one, but I guess we'll get and we'll have to watch this space. Ribble are here at Rula and they've got their ultra aero bike and it's in some really nice sort of exotic colorways and it's a reminder that I guess they offer custom painting. So they've got the colorway that we had when we did a first look on it down here, which I've been reliably informed is not called Unicorn Blood. People keep going into the shop and asking for Unicorn Blood. That's just a name I made up. But it does look like Unicorn Blood. I've not seen one like this before, which is kind of like purple and pink and that's right rather cool and it's got the new Ultegra Di2 on it as well which is first time I've sort of seen that group set fitted to a bike and then there's a really nice matte black and gloss black one over there with a silver ribble logo on it looks incredibly smart and that's got the new Jura Ace Di2 on it it looks incredible and the other thing here is that the Drops Lacole women's team is actually here on the stand right now because they're going to be riding these bikes next year but we don't know what the team's going to be called next year yet, but well, maybe post your suggestions in the comments down below. There's always lots of beautiful bikes here at Rula, and this one I'm particularly excited to see. It's one we featured on the tech show and we spoke about it and I've seen pictures of it, but this is the first time I've seen it in real life. It's a bike that was designed by Tade Pogaccia. Uh, it's a Colnago V3 RS with a custom paint job called Fire and Ice, which he came up with. I don't know either. I mean, maybe he's just a fan of Game of Thrones. But the, the paint on this is beautiful. Like this ice crystally effect. And then this, this sort of, you know, red fade that's on here. And then sort of, well, I guess maybe it's to signify charcoal or something at the bottom. But it, I mean, it's, it's absolutely exquisite. It's got all the best Italian components on it. So you've got Bora Ultra, WTOs on there. I mean, they're just the, the bee's knees, those wheels. But the most interesting thing about this is it has an NFT attached to it, a non-fungible token. If you don't speak nerd, that's basically like kind of a, a sort of cryptocurrency, blockchain, Bitcoin-y thing that, that means it has a unique identity and you can log onto an app and, and trade it when you sell the bike. We did a tech show on it. It's kind of cool. 
Pock has launched some new sunglasses today at the show. They're called the Illicit, and naturally they're available in a range of colours. We've got some here in a rather, rather nice orange. I'm going to put them on. There you go. So the, the first thing that strikes me about them is just how light they are. So it's ridiculous. They're just 23 grams, and that's thanks in part down to the frameless construction, but also the way that you've got this almost like cantilever construction of the arms to help reduce weight as well. Now, everything's fully interchangeable in these, so you can take the arms off and the nose piece. I'm not doing that right now because I'm holding a microphone, but I'm going to put everything down and, and show you. So this is the clarity lens with all the hardware removed, and there are different lens options uh, depending on your sort of chosen activity or you know what light levels you're going to be operating in. But yeah, pretty cool. I'm going to put one on again, and you can tell. Oh, these ones are pink. What do you think? The new POC elicits hot or not? The glasses, not me. Muckoff has got something very interesting here at Ruler, and it's their new ultrasonic cleaning station. And the idea behind this is this will be fitted into Muckoff bike shops that distribute Muckoff. And you can bring your chain along and they will treat it for you, optimize it. So the system works by having three baths. You've got the cleaning bath, and then these baths apply the lubricant. There's two different ones. There's their ludicrous AF uh, lube, which is their all-out performance race lube, and then their hydrodynamic lube, which is kind of a more all-purpose lube and a bit better in the wet. And you would pick which one uh, better suited your needs. And the, the reason sort of behind using ultrasonic baths, or sonicators as they're known in chemistry land, is um, they're really good at cleaning things. And that's because by putting the sonic vibrations through the solvent or the liquid that's in the bath, that's able to permeate the links and the little gaps in grooves in your chain and through the rollers and pins and really get into those nooks and crannies and get rid of the dirt. They've got a special uh, cleaning fluid that's to be used in this that they've developed too. And then the next step is to put it in with the lube and then the same process happens again, but kind of in reverse. The, the sort of hydrosonic sound waves cause the liquid, the solvent, the lube to permeate in between all the rollers so that your chain is perfectly lubed and is consistent and there's nothing in between. And the bike shop will do this for you for a fee. And, and they reckon that with the ludicrous AF lube, your chain would be good for around 400, 500 miles uh, with basic sort of maintenance after there on in. Met has got a cool new helmet. This is the Trenta 3K MIPS Carbon. So you can see it's got the very nice carbon layer on here to keep it very lightweight. But then the big news is the MIPS liner inside. This is the new MIPS Air liner. I've not seen one of these before, but it's very minimalist compared to a traditional MIPS liner. So if I show you this helmet, which has a sort of traditional MIPS liner, and you can see that's the yellow MIPS liner in there, that piece of plastic that can move around and act as a slip plane. But then here, it's a very nice padded affair that can still act in the same way. Having been to the Met factory and seen how they perform their safety testing, I can only imagine the horrors that this poor helmet's been put through in the design process. And if you haven't seen the Met video, one of the things that I love about the, the Trenta is that it's actually been designed by the same chap who designs Lamborghini Aventadors and Lamborghini Huracans. So, that's why it has such a nice, a nice form to it. You've seen the Hope Lotus bike before, but I'm willing to bet you've not seen one painted like this. This thing looks well, it's absolutely incredible. This is actually an artist's interpretation of an alternative version of the Team GB flag, hence the, the red, white and blue. And it's been painted by a guy called Death Spray Custom who has painted bikes in the past, actually. He did a few of Peter Sagan's bikes when he was at Cannondale Liquid Gas. You may remember some of those. And he's also painted stuff for the rally driver, Ken Block, which is rather cool. I'm a big fan of this. I think, well, I've not really seen a paint job like this. It's got a white disc wheel on it. But what do you think? White disc wheel, hot or not? Pirelli's got its full range of tires here. So you've got the P0, uh, TLR SLs, they're the super light ones, and you've got the P0 
race TLR. That's actually the tire that Lizzie won Harry Roubaix on uh, in a 30 millimeter width. Pretty cool. But if you're look, you know, looking for a more wallet friendly option, there's a new tire here, which I've not seen before, but it was launched back in August. It's the first time I've seen it. It's called the Pirelli P7. Um, so it's available in 24 to 32 millimeter widths. So it's got a lot of the sort of tech and it's that same thing we always hear about trickle down tech from some of the more sophisticated uh, tires in the range, but in a more affordable package. So the UK price is around 24 pounds, which is much kinder on your wallet than some of the more expensive options. Nice, still got a nice Pirelli logo on the side. Pinarello are here and they've got some really nice bikes on the stand. This is my favorite though. It's Gianni Moscon's bike from Paris-Roubaix. And the most cool thing about it is it's still got all the dirt on it. It hasn't been cleaned. It's absolutely filthy. But I don't know, there's something really cool about it. And it's also interesting because, well, disc brakes. In EOS, we're using disc brakes at Paris-Roubaix. Will they be using disc brakes in all races next year? I'm not sure. Guess we'll find out. And I had to show you this one as well, because when you can see it in person, it looks incredible. This is Carapaz's bike that was given to him in celebration of him winning the Olympics. And so he's got this gold paint job on. But quite a lot of people took the mickey out of Carapaz saying that his gold bike wasn't gold. But in this light here, it does look gold. And this metallic paint job is beautiful. You've got like a matte black finish here, but the way that the gold, the metallic paint, sort of fades in and blends into the black. It's not just a sheer cut, it just sort of blends in. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm, I'm a big fan of these metallic paint jobs. We're seeing more and more of them. But what do you guys think? Is metallic paint cool or, or is it not cool? I, I really like it. There are lots of very fancy pants, bikes and bits of kit here at Ruler. This one has really caught my eye. I've not seen one of these in the carbon before, but it's a BMC masterpiece. And it's, well, as the name suggests, a masterpiece. It's their top of the range frame set. So it's based on a BMC road machine, but although it's the same shape and geometry as a BMC road machine, that's about all it shares. The layup is meticulously done by hand with the finest carbon fiber that's commercially available, Torre, one million or whatever it's called but it's done by a single engineer meticulously by hand in a single piece you may have seen uh, videos in the past we've done about how bikes are made and the rear stay the rear triangle is separate from the rest of the frame um, whereas here it's all done in a single piece construction it's laid up by hand like I said, by one person all the individual swatches of carbon and then as it comes out the mold this is as it appears fresh out there's no surface finish required on it because it's just so meticulously done it takes a lot of hours to make one of these but it's just this bare carbon finish and you can see the weave of the carbon no paint on there and consequently it's very very light but if you want one well it's a kind of it's one of those things if you have to ask how much yeah yeah probably don't put it on your christmas list So that's been the Ruler Bike Show. I hope you've enjoyed looking at all the amazing and rather bling things that we've shown you. Let us know in the comments what your favorite thing is uh, that we've shown you at the show. And if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. See more content like this. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you the next one. I'm going to go and have some cheeky libations over at the bar over there. Bye.